What's up everybody? Welcome back to Wild Willow. So it's been one whole year that I have owned my Thunder Nova 51 100 watt. And let me tell you, I have learned quite a bit along the way. So in today's video, I wanna go over some things that I would have done differently. Also, if you do not have a CO2 laser, I am gonna be going over a bunch of things that you should know before you purchase a CO2 laser. And if you do already have a CO2 laser, I'm gonna be going over some really cool upgrades that I've done to mine, and maybe it will inspire you guys. And lastly, I'm gonna discuss, would I get another CO2? Hint, hint, I am. But will it be from Thunder Laser? Let's jump into today's video and get this thing going. Okay, so first let's go over the things that you need to consider before you're purchasing your CO2 laser. Uh, one of them being your hookups. I'm talking about air, power, and exhaust. So all three of these things need to stay together. They are gonna go in the same location on whatever wall you decide to drill your holes for everything. Uh, you need to figure that out before the CO2 laser gets in. Although it's optional, I highly recommend getting an external air compressor. Just like brushing your teeth, you don't technically have to do it, but you most definitely should. That's how I feel about the external air compressor. So you will most definitely need a dedicated outlet. For me, having the 51, I needed a 20 amp outlet. And I will put up a chart right here from Thunder Laser's website uh, for the power requirements. So if you guys wanna check that out, take a picture of it, you're gonna need it. Let's talk about ventilation. So ventilation is super important and you really need to think about where your fumes are gonna be going when you're running your laser. For example, we live in a house, we work out of our home, we have neighbors to consider, they're super cool. We don't want them bringing in toxic stuff. We got dogs, you gotta think about that, and kids. It's all super important and you need to really think about these things before your laser comes in. So for us, we have a very small side yard and the exhaust was building up, up a lot. So we did like a chimney style exhaust up to our roof and it was pulling all the fumes up into the sky and we don't even smell it anymore. So now we're gonna talk about size. You really need to consider what size do you really need? What are your plans with your laser? And also what are your future plans with your laser? Although I do not regret my decision with going with the 51, it is a very big laser. I was actually very surprised when it came in on the shipping crate how big it really was. And if it wasn't for me making really big signs, I definitely would not need a laser this size. Okay, you're definitely gonna need more space than your overall size of your laser. If you have a glass tube, you're gonna need a spot for your chiller. Also, with your exhaust running out the back, you're gonna need room behind there. And what I recommend is that you can go all around your laser. What me and Joel did whenever, before our laser actually got in, we did uh, masking tape on the ground to give us an idea of where it was going to go. So since we're talking about size, the last thing I want to discuss is the spot size for my 100 watt. So with the 100 watt, it is a bigger laser, so the spot size is going to be more powerful and you will lose a little bit more detail especially in comparison to my uh, 20 watt diode that I have. This can still get the job done, that's why I love this laser because I am still able to do some of my, finer, some of my fine detailed patches and I'm also able to cut thick acrylic and thick wood for my signs. So definitely keep in mind, if you're, if you're doing something that has more finer detail, um, you're not gonna wanna get a really big laser like this. But if you're like me and you do a little both, I do recommend this one because it's gotten the job done for me for lots of jobs. All right, so what would I do differently? And that is be more prepared. You can never be too prepared. You really need to make sure that you have everything that you need before your laser arrives. And I did, me and Joel, did pretty good at being prepared, but there are a few things that delayed our process and everything, and I think it's important to go over. So I know. I've made a lengthy video here or there, and I'm sorry about that. I don't mean to, I just feel like I have a lot of cool stuff I wanna tell you guys. Uh, but for today's video, let's try to keep this short, not very long. Uh, I'm just gonna put a list of everything I think you're gonna need before your laser comes. So screenshot it, take a picture of it, whatever you wanna do, there it is. So the last thing that I would have done differently is pay more attention to my placement. It's super important. Um, whenever we first got it in, we're like, this is the greatest spot for it. No. We had our exhaust going out a doggy door out into the side yard. Um, and we had our chiller right in front of our dryer, not the biz. And also our water heater and everything was behind it, not the biz. 
So think about it before it gets in, placement is key. All right, up next we have our upgrades. And this upgrade has been pretty handy. You don't need it, but it's kind of cool. It's our ethernet. And down here we can access it with our key. So originally our ethernet cable was plugged in right here and it was just in the way the kids were tripping on it. It was annoying. So what we decided to do is we fed it through this hole over here and ran it all the way through and then up into the ethernet. So now it is out of the way. And if you don't know why an ethernet cable is a handy little accessory, uh, neither did I until recently. Um, Joel informed me that it is a way for you to send projects from anywhere in your home to your laser. So you could be relaxing in bed, send a project to your laser, it's ready to go. So it's not a necessity, but it definitely sure does come in handy. Another little upgrade is having this felt attached on the inside of the laser. I put my all my magnets on here. That way you're not pinching yourself whenever you're putting these back on. They're easy to take off and you're not scratching your laser. Okay, so next little upgrade that we have is our cute, adorable mini toolbox, a cobalt from Lowe's. Not only is it so tiny and cute, it's actually really handy. The top flips up, you can put stuff up here. And then in my second drawer, um, I use my laser to cut out this foam so that my laser lenses and nozzles fit in here nice and snug because you don't want those moving around. And then it has a bottom drawer and I have my cleaning supplies in it as well. So some other things that I keep on my laser, easily accessible, a little upgrade, um, are these organizing uh, little boxes. Uh, this one holds all my tools on it and I keep it right on my laser. And then I also have one for all my material test cards. I use these all the time, so I like to keep them on my laser so that they're ready to go. If you guys want to get these files for these little organizers I made, I actually do have them on my Etsy. I will link it down below. So the Aerosys that my uh, Thunder Nova came with worked pretty good, but nothing beats hooking up to an external air compressor. Over here, I have my air compressor. I got this from Lowe's. Um, we used to have one before this and it was very loud. This one is fairly quiet. Um, and we have it hooked up over here to our laser. Set up over here. Um, this is our water separator that we use. As you can see, it comes all the way down from over there. All right, so keep in mind, if you live in a humid area, you are going to need to upgrade your system a little bit. And the way that you can do that is by getting desiccant dryers. This will ensure that you're not getting water in your lines. If you get water in your lines, then it's gonna mess up your engraving, it's gonna mess up your cuts. It's a no-go. Uh, luckily for me, I live in a pretty dry area. Last little couple upgrades that I have in here that I use a lot. Um, I have a pick in here on a magnet. I use this all the time to pick out my material so I don't have to get my hands too dirty. And then I have my focus tools that I cut out with my laser out of clear acrylic. And then I glued magnets on the back of them. And then I have my six millimeter one right here. I engraved on them so that you can see what they are. Super handy. And they go right there. So some things that I really love about my Thunder Nova is the fact that it has dual air assist. So whenever you're in light burn, if your air is set to off on your, on your layer, uh, the air will run low on here and you're able to adjust it as well. When it's set to on, you can adjust it to really high. What I like to do is um, on low for my engravings, I have it on barely enough to where it just keeps my lens clean. And then for my cuts, I like to have it really high. And sometimes that fluctuates depending on the material that I'm cutting. When using this laser, I have very clean and reliable cuts. That's something that I was actually pretty blown away by when I first got it and I cut some plywood. And I'm used to using my um, old diode laser and there'd be so much residue after my cuts. And then after using this, there's literally barely any residue at all. Like your finger doesn't get black at all after you rub the edge. And that was super helpful for me. Less sanding, super awesome. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about today is would I go with Thunder Laser again? Absolutely. In fact, I'm actually going to be getting another laser from them very soon, uh, hopefully, and it's going to be one of the Bolt series. I need something that's going to have a little bit more uh, precise detail, um, and I also want to be able to cut these patches out really fast, so I think the Bolt will be a very good fit for me, and I will just use this one to cut out my signs and my larger projects. So something to keep in mind whenever you are going to be purchasing a laser is you really want good customer service. You don't realize 
You want good customer service until you freaking need it. And there's been times that I needed it and I got a response within like four minutes. I've heard a lot of people go on and on about Fender Laser's uh, customer service. It is really top tier. Another really cool thing that they have is they have a big Facebook group. You can go on there, you can ask questions, and people are eager to help you out. Another big plus about their customer service is that they are located in the United States. Um, it is super handy when you're trying to reach them. When I first got this laser, um, before I even knew I needed this laser, um, I actually reached out to Grant. He is a sales rep uh, with Thunder Laser. And something that I really appreciated is like I was able to talk to him about what I do, the things I'm looking for, and he helped me figure out what laser was gonna work best for me. So if you're on the fence and you're not really sure what laser is going to be suitable for you, if you reach out to their sales department, they are happy to help you figure that out. When I first got this ordered, I was the most excited about being able to cut acrylic and also not being limited to what I can cut. Um, I, cu I do a lot of custom signs um, and in the past before I had this, I couldn't cut acrylic and I was limited to the size. I mean the effort that I put into some of my larger signs using my diode was insane, but I got her done. But having this, I mean, it changes the game for me in so many ways. It's been super beneficial and helpful for my business. All right, everybody, that is a wrap for today's video. I really hope that I was able to inspire you guys, help you guys out. Um, if you guys are not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'm always trying to put out good stuff for you guys. Not only am I here to help you, I have people reaching out to me literally all the time, asking questions, and I'm happy to help. Um, but if you guys are interested in a Thunder Laser, I will have them linked below. I definitely recommend you guys also go into their sales team. They are happy to help you. Even if you just have questions and you don't want to buy one, they will answer them for you. Also, be sure to let them know that me, Emily from Wild Willow, sent you over their way. I will link everything that I can link down below. And yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Peace out.